Hey there, this is Keith Lee uh, from American Retail Supply, and I'm here with Maurice Gordon. Welcome to our uh, presentation of EMV, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, about a year ago or six months ago or whatever, most of us hadn't even heard of what EMV, wouldn't have had any idea what it was. Um, and uh, it's going to affect us as retailers a lot here very shortly. So <clears throat> that's why we wanted to get together and uh, give you this information that we have. Um, and first off, I'd like to start by asking Maurice, you know, why should these guys out there listening pay attention to you? One, EMV is not, I mean, it is an option, but it's not because of what it incorporates with the liability shift. Um, I've studied in the last six months, I've spent hours and, and I probably attended 20 webinars just about EMV presented by partners of ours, vendors, processors, all sorts of people to get as much information as I can to present to our customers to educate them and share that information. Yeah, and so it's your job for one thing. It's kind of how you see it, right? Exactly. I, I see it as a benefit. Um, it, it, it will benefit our customers in, in, in general. It, I want to know so I can share with them. That way our customers know when, when they call me or they need my staff or you or any of the sales reps, we're a good source to answer these questions for them. Right. Okay. So you've spent hours and hours. I think you're hours. telling me probably 40 to 60 hours. In the, probably the last month alone, just about EMV preparing for this. I mean, I, I the, the whole of EMV, when you start getting into it, just goes, it, it, you can dig and dig and dig. So what I did is I got the information to be pertinent to our customers. Yeah. Good. Yeah, and that's that's the whole point. You don't need to dig and dig and dig. Maurice has done it. Uh, I do want to also, though, uh, let you know that I don't, you know, we haven't practically rehearsed this. We know what we're going to talk about for sure. But uh, I do want to make sure that if we sound like we're giving legal advice or accounting advice or any of that kind of advice, neither of us are accountants or lawyers, and we're not giving legal advice, and we're all giving you the information as best as that we know it, and uh, some of it could probably change, I'm guessing. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and uh, um, but I, I think we got a pretty good handle on it, and we're starting, got to be ready for this October 1, or at least know where you're going in October 1. We, um, we said that we were going to talk about what is EMV, why the switch, why you need to switch, um, when do you need to switch by, what happens if you don't switch, and are there other options that don't put you at risk. But bef before we even start, let's start with what is EMV, and let's start with what does even EMV stand for? EMV stands for EuroPay, MasterCard, and Visa. Okay. And, and You'll see a slide here in a few minutes, um, but there's EMV has been around for a while, so it's new to the U.S., and a lot of people are, are shaking up by it. Right, right. But it's not new. No, it's, it's forever. It's been well, not, uh, we'll hit that a little later, right? Yeah, it's been in use in Europe for over 20 years. Right. Yeah, so it's not a new technology. Uh, that's one thing to be reassured by. You know, I gave this uh, little title, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. There's not a lot of ugly, frankly, that I see. Um, I don't know if any of you have actually used your uh, EMV card. I have one, and I've gone to a place where I've used it. And the only difference was the card went into a machine for a second or two and popped out rather than me swipe, um, swiping it. So that's, on my end, as a consumer, the only thing that happened when, when I used it recently. Um, so let me just uh, interject here real quick. They actually have a term for that now. Okay. It's called dipping. Okay, dip in. And so if you hear the term dip in, dip out, what they're referring to is putting your card with the chip in or out. Okay, good enough. Good enough. So let's go on. Uh, EMV, the good, the bad, and the ugly. How about the good? Well, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then, so in the good, some of the good stuff that's going to come up is the security. There's a lot of new security enhancements. It helps with fraud prevention. And it's a new technology that's going to keep you and your financials safer, and it's also going to help protect your customers. Like we keep, you know, we focus on our customers, making sure they're good. You want to make sure your customers are 
taken care of and that they're protected as well. Some of the, there are some bad. Um, the liability shift, there's a lot of questions around this. And there's some different points of view on it, but the basis of it is if you don't go and start using EMV, you're liable for any fraud that could be traced back to have happened from your store or your business. Now, is that just, is that, does that include if somebody's using a bad card and it's EMV, it has an EMV chip in it, but they've stolen it, but they've stolen it right now. And, and if they use a stolen card now, the retailer isn't responsible for it, right? No. If it's swiped. No. If but with an EMV, tell me how that works. Well, with an EMV, if it's a stolen card and they were to use it, it simply would be um, rejected. If it was the, now, or the, the owner of the card had called and said, hey, my card was stolen, it would be rejected. If it hasn't been, the transaction would go through, but the issuing bank of that card would be liable for the transaction. Right. And they would cover that risk, not the merchant. Or, or the customer who owns the card. There's, of course, you know, the typical headaches getting it straightened out. But in the end, it would be the issuing bank's responsibility. Okay, so that's part of the liability. But the other part of the liability is with fraud and explain that as, as far as how the fraud is. Um, I'll touch base a little bit here because there's I, I have a pretty good detailed slide that touches that. We can wait. Okay, so I'll go on from there. Um, the other bad, you have to buy new equipment. None of the existing equipment that had the MSR stripe on it, um, it's, it, it won't work. You have to have a special I, a special thing to read the card. Um, there are a lot of misleading rumors about it being moved or pushed out or any of that. You can cancel all of those out as far as um, rumors. The, the October 1st, this is going live. You don't have a choice. There's no choice. Um, liability shift that's going to happen. So I don't know what other rumors you may have heard, but the ones I kept hearing a lot is they were talking about moving the date. That's not going to happen. It is locked. It's been locked in that date for over five years, um, and they're not going to move it. Some of the uh, ugly things is there is one option that is more secure that's not being talked about, and that's, I'll touch base on that as well a little bit later, but there is a more secure option. Um, some of the other ugly solutions for your PCPOS, for any of that stuff, uh, you see your mobile device, they're all, they're, they're being really slow to come to the market. They're just slow coming out. Um, the other thing is once CMV goes into place, a lot of analysts predict that crooks will revert to more phishing schemes with your emails and stuff. So it's going to be even more important for you to be cautious in your email, what you open, what you read, um, websites you go to, you, your card, you're going to have to be more careful of that because instead of um, hacking a computer at a store or something, they're going to revert to going after the consumer now. Okay. So um, we have some questions we want to answer before we go to the next slide, so let me go ahead and address those really quick. So Tim, you guys saw a recent stat that less than 1% are ready in the U.S. out of over 40,000 merchants. 40 million. That's oh, right. sorry, my bad, 40 million. Um, I would say that stat is fairly old. I do have a slide where I <clears throat> uh, looked up details as far as that. There's a, a good website called emvco.com that has a lot of data. emvco.com. Okay. Uh, it has a lot of information that's, that's been one of my primary sources because they're the ones that design the encryption and all the stuff around it. So that's where I've been going to get a lot of information. Okay, let me ask another. Um, someone asked to repeat the date, and it's October 1, 2015 is when you're supposed to be EMV compliant. Without question, every, every retailer in the U.S. is not going to be there. Um, you open yourself up to more liability if you're not there, and that's why we're doing the, um, this webinar right now. Now, um, the other ones talks about how is EMV re related to PCI compliance. If there's going to be a change. So when stuff I've been reading is if you have an EMV compatible system and you're using an EMV compatible device, 75% of your 
or 75% of the merchants out there won't have to go through all your typical yearly scans and all that stuff. You'll be able to say, I have EMV, and that's about it. Now, it's not everybody. It's 75%. So there, what it is is that 75%, because of how the cards work, there's less possibility of fraud. So it comes down to how the cards work with the encryption. Um, there is still be a PCI requirement, and they're actually going to be releasing a new one um, to go with EMV here shortly. I um, mean, you can find that on the PCRstandards.org website. Again, that's PCIstandards.org. Um, they're the ones that actually, comp they're the group that compromises of all the people that come out with these laughing parts of great ideas. I know for us merchants, it, it can be a headache. Let me enter. In <clears throat> What we're going to do from here on out, though, because I promised that this was only going to be 20 minutes to a half an hour, is we're going to let you go through everything, Maurice. And then as you have questions as you're listening, make sure and type them in on the questions box. That should be over on the right-hand side of your screen. And we're going to get to all of the questions after we're done, because I promised this was going to be 20 to 30 minutes. You've got about 20 minutes left at the most. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. let's get you through, and then we'll answer all the questions. Okay. okay. Well, I have one. Let's answer this one question okay. to, for Dan. He's the last one, and it just has to do with online orders with the new technology. Now, I'm not sure if you're referring from the merchant side or the consumer side, so I'll just address it both real quick because it's plain and simple. There's no change for that. You're going to still enter your card number the way, same way you do now. Um, if you're buying something online, there's no change in that. The EMV chip and pin is only affects face-to-face -face transaction. So that's something key to keep in mind. So we're going to stop there on the questions. I see several of them. Keep typing up. them up, though. We've got a lot of great questions. Yeah, we have a lot of great questions. <laughs> I didn't wanna... realize that there were going to be that many good questions. Get through my presentation, and then we'll, we'll hit those questions head on. So give me, let me get going here. Um, just here's some miscellaneous information about EMV. Um, as Keith and I were talking earlier, it's been around for almost 20 years now. The U.S. is the last major market to adopt EMV. Um, Asia was prior, which they did it last year. Um, and there's actually about a 32% adoption rate worldwide. So it, it's moving pretty quickly. Um, here's just some interesting fraud facts. So EMV reduced fraud by 33% in England when it was introduced in 2004. And it reduced fraud by 98% in France, and it was released in France in, I think it was 2007. So the fraud reduction for merchants or for, for customers like you guys that we're, we're sharing this information with is great. It's, it's your liability and stuff really with this is going to go down as far as the possibility of fraud. Fabulous. Fabulous. So this is some details. This goes back to the question. Um, that I first paid. So I'm just going to go, what is EMV? So EMV is a global payment system that entails putting a chip or a microprocessor chip into debit and credit cards, making them less vulnerable to, or to prod for in-person transactions. Uh, again, this is, like I said a minute ago, face-to-face. -face. Uh, that's why we're doing, they're, they're doing the switch. Fraud. You saw that previous slide with those great reductions in fraud. That's why the switch. Do you need to switch? Um, even though adoption of, of the EMV initiative, which involves changing out current processing device to those that support EMV-enabled credit cards, um, you don't have to, but I would recommend it. Um, anybody that says, oh, don't do it, you shouldn't do it, is is leading you in a bad direction. So from, from me, from Keith, from American Retail, if you can do the switch, we recommend it. Why? There's, it protects them from liability um, is, is the biggest reason. And that's the biggest reason everybody wants to do it in the first place, correct? Right. I mean, they just, that's why the credit card processors want to do it. And that, and again, the whole idea is that the liability then, if you're, if you can you do EMV and you have a fraudulent case come out of your store, um, 
and you haven't done it, you're responsible for it. Now, if, that, if people don't have an EMV chip in their card, where's that falling? So every card isn't necessarily going to have an EMV chip by October 1st, right? right? Exactly. So here's some miscellaneous, some, I don't have these in any slides, some miscellaneous information in my reading. They don't anticipate for all cards in the U.S. to be replaced with chip-enabled cards until 2020. Yeah. You need to think about that. That's five years from now. That's pretty staggering. Right. But they still figure it that long. Um, the October 1st deadline is for the standard merchants and everything, but your gas pumps and ATMs, they still have two more years. Oh, really? Yeah. So they, you'll still be using your magnetic strip and your ATM, your cash machine, and at the gas pumps right. as to where all the stores and all the face-to-face. -face. Like, this is the key. It's face-to-face -face transactions are going to, or what really is where EMP is utilized. Okay. Okay, good. When do you need to switch by? Uh, we talked about this a couple times, but here's on the screen. October 1st, 2015 is the date in which the liability shift for fraudulent card transaction responsibility takes effect. Now, keep in mind this October 1st date this doesn't mean that you have to have EMV. The only thing that really happens on this October 1st date is it's the liability shift. That's all that really happens. Um, I've got a slide that's going to address this better. So so here's this kind of goes together, so that's why I'm taking these together. So what happens if you don't switch? So for operations, nothing. The way you did transactions, on September 30th, it will be the same as October 1st, whether you switch or not. They're all going to be handled the same. There is no special thing you have to do. You don't have to turn the lights off five or six times and dance around the table or anything like that. It's business as usual. But if you are still using a magnetic strip only device and your customer has an EMV enabled card, you are liable for any fraud that may result from that transaction. Okay. So here's another way to look at it. If the card that your customer presents to you is replicated and used to buy $10,000 worth of goods, you're responsible for that $10,000 plus any fines or fees if it's found that you are the lowest EMV rated on the security. So where they're going to look for the fault is if, you got different levels. So you have the merchant, the, the processor, the issuing bank. Whoever has the least secure is the one they're going to point the finger at and make responsible. Yeah, and that's if you're taking a chip-enabled card, but you're not reading the chip, you're probably going to be the one. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Um, are there other options that don't put you at risk? Yes, end-to-end. This form of security has been around for a few years. End-to-end -end encrypts the card data from the point of being swiped, and it, the key is unlocking that encryption when it hits your process. Um, a lot of POS systems already have this. After several of these big breaches that happened at like Home Depot and um, the Vaughn and all these other places, you see that they've gone to this process. They've moved to the end-to-end -end encryption afterwards, where they could have done it before and wouldn't have been an issue because all that data would have been encrypted where nobody could have technically read it anyway, but it took that to happen for them to make that switch. So yes, if you don't have the ability to go EMV, look to at least do the end-to-end. -end. Why would they not have the ability to go EMV? Some POS systems don't have um, any of the encryption. That's where it comes to that slide I was talking about that solutions are slow to market. Right. Um, they just, some systems don't have um, that integration. They're still working on it, but um, there's one that I know of that I was looking at. They're not even going to have their EMV development done until the end of November. So that's going to put their customers um, at risk for those two months. Now, that's not a POS system that we use, so I want you to know that. If you got your, I was just looking, I at, I was looking at Maureen and saying, wait, no, we don't have that issue, right? It's not us. <laughs> okay, not good us. Good so, uh, <laughs> I, I just want you to know, you know. So, that's been a downside. Downside is getting the POS systems up to date to meet this. Um, there's a lot of different ways of, of 
processing, but that's something to keep in mind. So now, let me ask you this, though. Um, we did a webinar a while back, a few months ago, where we talked more about this E to E. Mm -hmm. um, and we have that available also, right? Yes. We can help people with the E to E. Yep. Uh, help them with, and yes, there were some questions on here. Can we help you with that? We'll get back to that uh, when we get to the questions, and the answer is yes. We can help you integrate all of this stuff in your business. Um, but were you done with E to E now, or did you have anything else to say on that? Uh, yes. That's about it. I mean, I'll, I'll answer any questions anybody has, but that's about it as we go. Now, what else do you have here? Are you done here? Uh, I've got one more slide. Okay. A bit about liability. Um, just to keep you in mind, the end-to-end -end still you have that liability, but the end-to-end -end is the most secure. It's even more secure than EM or EMV, but they don't want you to know that. <laughs> so okay, so let me show you that because that's where I'm a little confused. The E to E um, is is an option you can have mm -hmm. with your POS system and your and if your pro credit card provider. Um, has that, right? Exactly. Okay, so you can have that option. It is the highest level of security, correct? Yes. Yeah. But the credit card people aren't requiring you to have that. Exactly. And Good. But when it comes, and, and but it just ups your security even more in your business. Now, EMB um, is the, you're required to have it. And if you don't, the liability can come back to you big time. Exactly. Okay. So the reason, and, and just a bit of tidbit here, and, and maybe nobody cares, but just the reason why the processors didn't want to do ADE is the EMV was already in the Europe and or in oh, Europe okay. and all that, okay. and it was an easy integration to match so the cards could be used worldwide okay. instead of doing the ADE where okay. they would have to adopt it, our idea. Right, we would have to. There's a good, good, <clears throat> good option with the MV worldwide. Yeah, and we're the only one <laughs> that aren't doing it. Um, the better option may have been E to E, but nobody is doing that. Not that many people even here are doing it. We haven't even done it that many places here, let alone worldwide, where they're not using it much at all. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go back to some of these questions, um, and we've got a lot of them. So uh, bear with me while we look at some of them. Um, the point where the technology of the card is higher than the technology of the handler of the data is responsible. Typically, that will be the merchant with a non-EMV terminal. Um, that's kind of a comment, I think, from Tim. That's kind of what we were saying. Do you read that as the same thing we were saying? Yeah, is that whoever has the lowest level of security is the one that's going to get nailed. Exactly. And and if, and again, uh, I said it once. I hopefully won't repeat it any more than, than that. But any more than just this other time here. But the whole idea that if you're taking a chip-enabled card, but you don't aren't able to process the chip, yep. If you cannot, you're going to probably be the one that gets nailed. Exactly. Okay. So again, October twentieth, <laughs> October first, uh, two thousand fifteen. Uh, we talked a bit about EMV and PCI compliance. Um, if they're EMV, if they're using EMV, I think you said that most of the PCI stuff kind of goes away? It's, it's a 75% reduction. You're still going to have some PCI stuff because they... That you got to do? Yeah, PCI is more than just what you do with your POS system. There's requirements for passwords. There's requirements for the the paper yeah, thing yeah, we have, yeah, yeah. all that stuff. So you still will have that piece of the pie for PCI, yeah. but you won't have to go through the scans, and there's a lot of stuff you can go around. Um, we talked about online orders. They're going to be the same. Uh, PCI is, or EMV is really only directed to face-to-face um, um, -face, um, um, when you have the card. When a salesperson contacts me regarding the purchase of an EMV processor equipment, what five to seven questions should I ask, and what answers should I welcome or reject? That's a great question. Uh, so if somebody's talking to you about the purchase of EMV processor or equip, processing and equipment, what questions do they need to ask? 
Well, it comes down to more of how they're going to process cart. Right. Are you doing it through a POS, or are you going to do it through a separate terminal? So that is really where it's going to come down to, because if you're doing it through a separate terminal on the side and not doing it through your POS, my questions would be is, what is that terminal going to cost? What are my rates? Um, what are your rates? What do you mean? Uh, processing rates. Right. Okay, so credit card processing. Yeah. Your, your okay. fees and stuff. Um, so if you're doing it through a terminal, I, I would say it's a standard question. Also, you know, obviously make sure that it does have the ability to, do, you know, obviously do EMV. Now, some of the nice things about that are going to come with EMV is the, um, uh, what do they call it, the tap and go. Okay. Or the NFC, so near field communication. So that's some of the nice stuff that will come with EMV. So make sure that if you do get a terminal that, that's not connected to your POS, that it has the ability to do um, the tap and go. Also. Yeah, might as yeah. well. Yeah, because that's going to be like the Google Wallet, the Apple Pay, yeah. all of that. Yeah, yeah. So why not? Exactly. You've got it's to now. increase your ability to accept payment cards. Yeah, okay. So it's a good time to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the new device, will it work on uh, new and old cards? The answer is yes there, right? Uh, currently, yes. Right now, all devices are going to be have both the MSR and the chip, or excuse me, the EMV reader. Um, if you get one that only has an EMV reader in it, send it back and get one that has both. Because there's, you know, like, like we said, they anticipate 2020 before all of the swipes cards are gone. Okay. E-commerce is separate. New requirements, are they on their way, though? Um, I don't know. Do I... um, that's actually a comment from Tim. Okay. Um, he's just letting us know um, new requirements are on the way. Oh, for e-commerce type thing? Yeah. Okay. So Tim is Tim is a, a partner of ours that we work with who's, who's on here. I didn't realize he was there, but that's now I see his name. I know who he is. <laughs> okay, good. Good, good, good. <clears throat> what kind of cost can be expected for this upgrade? Um, it comes down to really how many terminals. Okay. Um, as far as the switch, it's going to be your terminal. What is that going to cost you? How many terminals do you have? Um, you know, if you have, let's say, right now we're, we're using the VX805 for the EMV, and our cost is about $230. That includes the cable and everything to make it work. Excuse me. Um, that's an integrated into a POS system. Now, you could have to buy a whole terminal that has that, and those could be 500 bucks. Okay. You can, I mean, it really comes down to you're going to get most of that through your processor and what they're going to charge you right. or not charge you. Okay. And they can go to their processor that they're using now and yes. get some of that stuff? Yes. Their processor they're using now should be able to give them that information. If they, you call your processor and they say, um, well, I still got to look that up for you. We're not sure where that's at. You need to look for a new process. Okay. And we can help them with that. If yeah. you're on this call, we can help you. We we think we have uh, the we think we have a fabulous um, team, and and I mean that literally because we help you um, and work with your processor. If you have issues, we'll we'll help you in that area a bit also. But we've also teamed up with the best processors out there in processing credit cards and, and, and doing your merchant services. And yes, we can we can help you with that. Uh, we certainly have the devices and we have all the we can get you the hardware and everything else you need and we have fabulous rates. Um, and would would love to help you on that. The Square is square, and that's the product, the, the item, processing EMV compliance. That's a good question. So because of what Square is, and it's primarily only for mobile, right. you know, whether it's in a POS, their Square POS right. or not, it is still a mobile device, and there are new requirements and hardware coming out for those. So you still have to do an EMV solution for those. Square will have their own thing because they like to build their own stuff. But the point is, is you there are separate requirements for mobile payment than there are for your standard payment. So do you get around this by just having a mobile POS in your store? I mean, you just eliminate. I mean, that doesn't seem very fair to me. <laughs> that, that okay, you gotta if you if you happen to be using a Square and a tablet, you don't have to worry about EMV right now. Then in October, oh, no, you'll still have to. Oh, okay. and that's the thing. The requirement of how it's going to be handled with the software and stuff has are still what we're waiting for. Because um, tap or excuse me, mobile payments is a 
huge. I mean, it's a small market now, but you know, the other stats I was reading is right now it's about 30 million or 30 billion a year, and they estimate by the end of this year it'll be 250 billion. So it's a it's a huge market that's increasing exponentially, but they have separate requirements. It's kind of like how the gas pumps have different requirements, and the ATMs have different requirements. So let me ask you this: You've got a store, and you're using Square as your only means of swiping cards. And EMV starts October 1. And somebody comes in with a chip-enabled card and uses it. Are you in trouble if it ends up being fraudulent? If you didn't use it as an EMV card yet. Yeah. So, uh, excuse me, got my tongue tied there. Uh, Square should have already have been contacted you with new a new solution, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. And, it, and if they haven't, you need to contact them? Yes. Okay, good enough. We'll go for there. Uh, can you stay close to the microphone? It sounds like you're going in and out. Thank you so much for that. We will do better. Uh, fraudsters will be hunting them down if they don't. I'm not sure. That's from Tim again. Um, so, oh, I see what you're probably saying there, Tim. Are you saying that uh, um, if you're not EMB, oh, this is this is a great one, by the way. Um, we tell people when it comes to we're we're a, a distributor for Checkpoint. The um, when you go into a store and they're they're the um, oh gosh, I just went blank on the term for them. Article <laughs> surveillance. Yeah, electronic article surveillance. Um, and you go into a store and it and it's got this stuff on it, and you walk out and it beeps and, and all that kind of stuff. And we say, and it's been proven, that um, that your competitors, when they put that in, are sending um, shoplifters to your store. And that's what I think Tim is getting at here. What happens is if, if you don't have um, electronic article surveillance, you're where the crooks go to shop. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, same thing here. If you don't have EMV terminals, and if you're not EMV compliant, where are the criminals going to go if they want to create fraud? I think that's what Tim is referring to here. They're going to try and hunt you down. Yeah, they're going to be looking for stores <laughs> yeah. that they can use those fraudulent cards. Um, I think also when Tim was talking about the, the being your email and stuff, being cautious with that because. Like in an earlier slide, EMV reduced um, fraud by anywhere from a third to almost uh, totally eliminated it in France. So they're going to look for somewhere to um, look to commit that fraud. So they're going to go for unprotected situation. The consumer email. Because I, I, being an IT person, I naturally, if I don't know who sent it, I delete it. But I, my dad is a good example. He re looks and clicks on every email, not sure of it, and I've removed multiple viruses and stuff from, from his computer uh, that he had inadvertently put on there. Sure. So, yeah, they're going to be going after the consumer now because the stores are more secure. And for Marcy, this may be a, a helps answer that um, um, question by of the square and uh, being able to use the uh, dip. Uh, and the, what did you call it, the tap and go? Yeah. So maybe Square is going to have that kind of solution maybe so they don't have to actually have um, a big machine there or yeah. whatever. Yeah, I don't you know. Think of the, think of the, um, yeah, the tap and go where they just tap the card. You tap right. like with the side where the chip is on the right. top. It reads the chip, and that's all you have to do. Um, that's probably what they'll do because that type of device is, um, how big to say it is, probably about two by two. Okay, good enough. Um, is there, uh, can we get this equipment from you? Yes. Um, it depends on which equipment is. We do not do terminals because we're not a processor. Um, we can refer you to a processor, but we do have terminals that will work with your POS. So uh, for that kind of stuff, I'd rather talk to you face to face so I can get details of what you're looking for. Oh, and let's do this. I think you've got. You know, we already covered all this. Yeah, and then it's so, all it. so this is Maurice's email and Maurice's phone number. If you have more questions at any point, uh, give that a call. We still have some questions we're going to cover here. Um, but as far as the um, 
equipment you need, you can call Maurice. Whether we can help you or not, you can call Maurice. And as far as um, credit card processing and merchant services, uh, give Maurice a call too. I think we do a very good job for people there. Um, customer can still be hit by a digital pickpocketer with W merchant reputation is still at risk in this catch and da damage reputation loss sale. Yeah, reputation. Uh, that's from Tim again, um, reminding us that the uh, you know you you, you re can really you don't want to be the the store and now you're not going to make national headlines maybe like Target did, but you don't want to make the local headlines either when you're the place that uh, that people have shopped and and all of a sudden all of their information is available. Another way to look at it, sorry to interrupt there, Keith, if fraud happens, let's just say it's a small case of fraud, which is typically 5000 bucks or 10000 bucks. If you got hit, let's say the fraud happened at your store, could you afford at your store to pay out five or $10,000 to cover those expenses plus the fees? So I figure if it was a $5,000 worth of sales ring up on that card number, you're probably liable for about 7500 with the fees and, and all that stuff. So the thing to ask yourself is, can I pay that seventy five hundred and it's not going to hurt me? Or that well, and and versus paying a few hundred dollars to get the proper exactly. equipment. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So a question here: Does RMS support E to E and MB, M, EMB? And the answer there is yes. And by the way, we're going to be have another webinar there. Any of you that are RMS, which is reach, um, our Microsoft solution. Um, some of you are our POS system. That, that it's what we sell to most of our clients is RMS as the software. It's a Microsoft product. You may have heard some um, rumors that that's going away and da 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 da. Um, and we you know, and it was, those rumors were because Microsoft didn't know what they were going to do with the product. And you can correct me if I say the wrong word as far as buy or sell or whatever merger, whatever, I don't know what, what the right word is. But all along, frankly, I, I've been telling some of the people that have asked me that, yes, I told you so. And it's basically Microsoft is 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 giving up that small end themselves, but they've sold it to Retail Room. Yep. And the, the RMS uh, software, the upgrades are actually going to be much better coming down the road. We've got one coming when? Uh, the end of this year, it's supposed to be December, January time frame is when it's going to be released. Right. Um, they haven't set a per an exact date. I actually have a webinar I'm attending tomorrow that they're addressing all right. that. So, okay. um, so it is soon. You know, that upgrade is not just a, oh, we're going to add this little feature or that little feature. It is a complete rebuild that they started two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and it has a lot of detail. Right. And and what's cool about it, frankly. Um, and what, it, what has happened is exactly what I hoped would happen, is that this small to medium-sized retail solution, what, 50 stores and down, mm -hmm. um, that solution Microsoft themselves was not excited about. No. And, and they weren't going to get excited about it. They, I don't know why they started it in the first place, probably, but, but they created a fabulous product. But it wasn't getting the development here in the last year or two that it really should have. And the new guys are dedicated to that small solution, that small retailer solution, again, 50 stores and down type solution. And so it's just way better. We're, we're really excited about it. So let's get on. We have a few more questions here. Um, Shopify, do you know, you know Shopify point of sales have this available? I do not. I, I thought Shopify. I'll, I'll look though. Um, and Amber, Amber, why don't you email um, uh, Maurice with that question, and uh, then he'll have your email to answer it yep. with too. PCI is about the handling and storage of data. It is separate from EMB. Yep. Okay. That's from Tim again. Okay. It's how you. It's 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 more about the security of of the ha handling and the storage of the data. Versus this, you now it's still tr it, it has to do with the transfer of the data all of the card, but it's more with that, um, and it is separate. Good point, Tim. If a client does not have a chip card, what liability is involved for the merchants? Same as it is now, right? Well, 
I'm thinking this is more after the first, so if the client doesn't have a chip feed, right. and there's fraud, it would fall to the issuing bank. Right. So the same as it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they have to have the chip card. You're in trouble when when they have the chip card and you're not chip card enabled, if you will. Okay. Free terminals are not free. They are pay yeah, go Kim, thank you. Thanks, Tim. Uh, if you're getting a free terminal from your provider, they're charging you more than likely a higher rate to process your credit card and your transactions, and um, free is not free. There is no free in this stuff. <laughs> yeah, what is that? Oh, that free is never free? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's just you're just going to be paying more every month. Uh, mobile is required to be EMV also, and again, if you've got the square going on there, you probably need to contact them. We're not experts on square. Uh, if the card number is manually entered, what is the liability? And I'm, I'm, I, got, I think I can even answer this one, Maurice. If it's manually let, entered and they're in front of you with the card, you're liable. It, right? I don't. Well, Could be. <laughs> this, is a, this is a kind of a, a unique question because if they manually enter the number, the question, you know, there's there's things that we don't know. Are is the store EMV? Uh, Set up for EMV. Is you, are you using an EMV terminal or not? If you are, then it's going to fall on the customer or their issuing bank. Yeah. Well, you, well, why would you manually enter it if you've got the card reader to read it and you shove it in the reader? Right. I mean, you get that's yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I think too much of them into things sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there you got the ability to read the EMV. Um, if you're manually entering it, you're going back a step <laughs> in liability. That's a good point, because if you're manually entering that card number, it means that card doesn't have a chip. And right. so it would be the issuing bank's issue problem. No, no, no. If they're manually entering a card, can they even manually enter a card with a chip? Yeah. Yeah, so it could have a chip in it, but they've manually entered it. They're going to be liable. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt. They're manually entering the card number. The card number. And it's an EMV uh, enabled car. They're going to be that even worse liability yeah. on their part than swiping it, and not and rather than having the dip. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm positive of that. Uh, mobile uh, readers from Tim again need to be EMV, and Square <laughs> Square is late. So sorry if you have Square. I'm a small business and accept the Square. I have a chip reader and I'm considering getting a Square Apple Pay reader. If client shows up with a non-chip card, what is the liability? I'm going to read that a little again here. Small business and they use the Square. You have the chip reader and considering getting a Square Apple Pay reader. If the client shows up with a non-chip card, what is the liability? From, from my understanding of reading that, Marcia, you have all of your ducks in a row, so to speak, of EMV, and the issuing bank who issued that card would be liable because there's no chip in the card. And you're all EMV tidy. Right. Okay. Uh, can EMV cards be used on old equipment? Yes, they can be used, but if they're used and there's fraud going on, an EMV, the EMV cards still have the swipe on the back of them, at least for now. Um, so. Yeah, you can still swipe it, um, but again, the liability issue falls to you. I would anticipate that you're going to have the, the dual card with the chip and the the MSR probably for at least another five or seven years. Square does have a new swiper already available for use with chip cards. I've used it. Good. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. The penalty can be as high as $50,000 plus the cost of the fraud. That's good info because I couldn't find anything as far as what the penalty may be. So that's from Tim, and Tim is one of our partners. Yeah, we should have maybe had Tim on the phone call too. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, to have him. <laughs> he's a busy, busy man. Okay. If fraud occurs in my store, uh, am I liable without having EMV? If the card was used in my store, then used for future fraud, am I liable for that future fraud? I'm guessing that's the question from Tove. Is yeah. that how you're reading it? Fraud occurs. You're certainly liable for the fraud in your store. We know that one. Well, if it 
if it's traced back where your store is where it started, then you're liable for everything from the point of your store forward. As far as now, if they went and used it at another store, but the other store also did the same thing, they're going to be as liable. Yeah. yeah. So, um, higher risk to you manually enter, you go to a higher rate and liability. That's from Tim again. What about phone orders that you have to manually enter the car, the number? Nothing changes on that. Right? No, no. They'll still you'd enter them into the device and it's still right. your higher rate than that. Right. Okay. So no, nothing changes. This is just on face-to-face -face transactions, right? Yep. B and B is all about face-to-face. -face. Yep. And so the next one, Paula. Paula, I think we got your answer there then too. That's also calling in. What about phone orders? Yep. Uh, what about manually enter? What about manually entered on a phone? Everybody had the same phone transaction there uh, going again. Uh, so great. It looks like we got that all answered. Uh, yes, future fraud is counted on counted in liability. The merchant has to cover the customer for up to four years of fraud protection. From Tim again. That looks like it's all of the questions. Anything else, Maurice? I think that's about it. If anybody has any questions, please email me or call me. Um, email is, is quick and easy for me to respond to. Um, I check my messages throughout the day, but email, is, I'm always on there. It's on my phone and everything. You know how it is these days. Um, I, I would like to thank two of our partners that helped me put this information together, and I got some. Uh, one of them has been on here helping with questions and giving us information, and that's Tim. He's with Educated Merchant. Um, they're a great local company. We work with them. And then also we work with Mercury Payments. So Mercury Payments and Educated Merchants Club, who is Tim, um, are the ones who help put some of this information together. I put it together and researched a lot, but they also helped me get this together. Yeah. Okay. And, and those are two of the guys that are really looking out for you, Mercury and Tim. Um, and those are the payment processors that we use. And we've, uh, um, we've, they love working with us. We love working with them. And we've negotiated some great rates for you guys. So thank you so much. Um, and uh, take care. Thank you all. Um, do, if you get a chance, uh, email me and tell, tell me what you thought about this webinar. Um, I really would appreciate that. Keith at AmericanRetailSupply.com. Keith at AmericanRetailSupply. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now.